What happens when you stack a heavy box on top of a light box? Destruction. Part of the problem of manual palletizing is that it often results in haphazard stacking of mixed merchandise. This results in damage as lighter items get crushed by heavier ones. This not only costs companies money, but also puts workers at risk. Another danger to consider are poorly stacked pallets. The collapsed boxes can easily fall and injure workers. Hey, watch it! Gee, I hope he's all right. Well, Walmart has dealt with these challenges for decades, and part of what makes them so successful is their willingness to innovate. Recently, they partnered with Symbotic to develop a cutting-edge AI-powered warehouse to revolutionize supply chain. I'll share the details coming up, but first, it's time for our premier product highlight, sponsored by Mauser Electronics. The Omron E6F CWZ 5G 1000PR incremental rotary encoder offers robust performance with 1000 pulses per revolution and a durable solid shaft design. Engineered for oil resistance and rated for up to 5000 RPM, it ensures reliable operation in harsh environments. Featuring A, B, Z signal outputs, a 12 to 24 volt DC supply range, and IP65 protection, it's ideal for industrial applications. The encoder's 60 millimeter zinc housing and stainless steel shaft provide durability, while the two meter pre-wired cable with bare ends simplifies installation. The Omron E6F CWZ 5G 1000PR incremental rotary encoder delivers reliable, high-performance operation in harsh industrial environments, making it ideal for demanding applications. To learn more, head over to mauser.com today or click the link in the description below. Understanding I.O. systems can be complex. To help simplify, we present David's Corner. Thanks, Andy. As important as networking is in a facility, we have to make sure that all of the machines and the devices can talk back to our control system to allow them to share all of the information for the sensors, the actuators, all the stuff that's happening on the machines. Now we could accomplish this by sticking an individual controller at each one of our machines, but then that's a lot of maintenance, that's a lot of programming, and that's a lot of expense. So instead, what we turn to most of the time is what's called a remote I.O. system. Remote I.O. simply means that we have all of the input and output channels, digital inputs, analog inputs and outputs. All of that stuff is distributed or it's remote to the controller and these are attached to each one of the machines. Then all the information is sent back over a network to the central PLC to do its job. Now they look a little bit different because they don't contain a processor, but we see many of the familiar things that we would see on any modular control system. First, we have what's called a network adapter or a network bus module. These will have different communication ports, sometimes Ethernet, Ethercat, RS-232, RS-485, and they'll have communication capabilities like Ethernet IP, Modbus over TCP, all kinds of network abilities to be able to share that information. We also have input and output modules. Obviously, we need those to be able to actually connect to the field devices themselves. But again, we're lacking the CPU because that processing happens back at our central control system. Sometimes we need a lot of power because there's a lot of I.O. devices out at our machines. So sometimes we have an additional power unit that does not provide any communication capabilities but simply amplifies the amount of power that's being sent to those field devices. And sometimes in these systems, we don't have enough power coming from the original bus module to be able to supply all of our field devices. So we have this inline power supply, or really a power amplifier, to ensure that we have enough power being delivered to all those massive quantities of field devices on some of these large pieces of equipment, all controlled by the central control system. And the best part about this is since it's modular, if we need to expand our system, we can simply add more expandable I.O. modules and then copy sections of the original code and simply change the address of the remote I.O. system, giving us much more flexibility if we want to expand or change the system in the future. And that's something that many manufacturers have found very useful as we have to adapt to all these changing systems around the world of manufacturing today. Andy? Back to you. 
Symbotic's AI-driven palletization optimizes box replacement by factoring in size, weight, and store layout for smoother depalletization. It groups related items, prevents allergen cross-contamination, and minimizes workplace injuries from unstable stacks. The system also singulates and orients box cases using an AI-powered vision system to assess attributes. Acceptable products move to buffering, while damaged ones are rejected. Bots then retrieve and distribute items within the buffer structure. AI calculates optimal routes for bots, maximizing space and boosting efficiency. That's a really cool advancement for supply chains, but I'm definitely going to miss those discounted damaged items. That does it for us. Be sure to click the link on your screen to stay updated on the latest in control automation.